Okay, we're back. This is David Sig from OffGridLiving.com and in this lesson we'll be talking about the components of a solar power system. This lesson will speak about how to create your own power system in your home so that you can power everyday small appliances such as cell phones, laptops, TVs, that sort of thing. One solar panel will not power your house, but a solar array might. Of course, I don't know what you've built or what you'll be using it for. So once again, I'm going to speak in general terms. First, we need to talk about the three primary components you'll need. And those would be a charge control controller, deep cycle batteries, and an inverter. Let's start with the charge controller. A charge controller maintains the electrical current from your solar panels to your batteries and prevents the batteries from being overcharged as well as prevents the backflow of electrical current. The charge controller is the brains of the entire system. Or maybe you could look at it like a policeman directing the flow of electrical current. Not all charge controllers are created equal or include the same features. The features you're most interested in is the preventing the backflow of current and the ability not to overcharge your batteries. For the panel you just built, a basic charge controller will do. One important thing you need to know is how many amps your solar panel produces. If you built the one outlined in this course using 36 3 by 6 inch solar cells, you should be producing 3.5 amps. You can also check the amps yourself while the panel is in the direct sunlight with the multimeter. So, if your solar panel is producing 3.5 amps, I'd get a charge controller that can handle at least 4 amps or more. The deciding factor will be if you plan on adding more solar panels in the future. The more amps, the larger charge controller you'll need. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to go with a simple charge controller that has the two features I just talked about. So I'm looking for a charge controller that can handle 4 amps or more, prevent overcharging, and has a backflow preventer. So, back to Amazon. And on the first page, I ran across this one. And for $30, it can handle up to 20 amps. Keep in mind, I'm not suggesting this brand or any particular brand of charge controller. I'm simply showing you where to go and what to get. Okay, let's talk about deep cycle batteries now. A deep cycle battery is designed to keep a steady amount of current over a long period of time. They can also be di deeply discharged over and over again, unlike a standard car battery. In short, they are usually used in heavy duty and industrial and or commercial applications. Forklifts and marine batteries are usually deep cycle batteries. Even though it's made to handle constant discharging, I wouldn't recommend doing so with the solar system. I also wouldn't allow the battery to come drain more than 60 to 80 percent. This can be controlled via the charge controller. Staying within those guidelines will extend the life of your battery for years. A typical 12 volt deep cycle battery will cost anywhere from $60 on up. Amazon, of course, will have them. If you don't like Amazon, no sweat. You can also find deep cycle batteries at automotive stores like Napa, AutoZone, Pep Boys, and the like. Also, Refer to the section of this course on how to get free deep cycle batteries. Okay, a note about charging deep cycle batteries. In order to charge a 12 volt battery with your solar panel, your panel needs to be producing at least 18 volts. The panel made in this tutorial does. Even though it is a 12 volt battery, you have to be producing more electricity than the battery is rated for. So, remember, 36 solar cells rated at 0.5 volts each hooked up in a series equals 18 volts. Next, we need to talk about the inverter. An inverter is a device that converts direct current, DC, to alternating current, AC, the kind of current that most household appliances run on. Your solar panel produces direct current. 
so you need a way to convert the solar energy into a usable form for your household. And this is where the inverter comes in. There are two types of converters you need to be concerned with. A modified sine wave inverter and a pure sine wave inverter. A modified sine wave converter is usually used for household appliances and devices. A pure sine wave inverter is usually used in more complex solar systems. So if you want to buy a modified sine wave converter, they can usually be bought at any electronic store and of course Amazon. Here's one I found on the first page for $30. Figure out ahead of time how many watts the device you want to hook up will be using. You can usually find these on the bottom of the device listed on the UL label or you can also look it up on the company's website. If you want a dead simple way to determine the wattage you can buy what they call a kilowatt meter off Amazon for $19. Now that you know what the various components do, in the next lesson we'll hook it all up and start generating some power.